What's up guys? This video highlights our visit to the Okinawa Churaumi Aquarium in Okinawa, Japan. Before we jump in, I have to mention that it was a fun drive just getting to it. The aquarium is located in the northern part of the island and we traveled through the mountainous regions to get there. The GPS in the rental car was only sort of helpful because although there was an English setting, we couldn't punch in the address because it only accepted Japanese input. Luckily, however, Erica's phone had international data and GPS, so we were able to get turn-by-turn -turn directions that way. The aquarium itself is a part of a massive complex. It's only one feature in a greater nature park with other sites such as like botanical gardens and beach areas. One could easily, easily spend a whole day here taking everything in. It was a bit rainy out, so we ended up spending most of our time inside the aquarium. I've been to a bunch of public aquariums, and the Okinawa Aquarium certainly holds its own as one of the best. Obviously, the sheer size of it is impressive, but the quality of the individual displays is top-notch. This reef system, for example, is absolutely spectacular. The corals in the system are enormous and practically growing on top of one another. You might also notice that there's coral-eating fish and inverts in here. I know I saw at least five parrotfish. Then I noticed this cuttlefish come into view. It's hard to gauge the size of it from the video alone, but it's probably 15 inches long. Cuttlefish are top-end predators and have voracious appetites. Who knows how many other fish in this display this guy consumes on a daily basis. I find stuff like this interesting because this is the effect scale has on a system. In a typical home-sized aquarium, you can't have coralivores and high-end predators like this, but in systems of this size, the growth of the reef outpaces predation to a large degree. Now I don't know if the aquarium has to constantly replenish the fish stocking levels, but as far as the corals are concerned, it doesn't seem to be dented by the presence of coralivores. The Okinawa Aquarium, like the Waikiki Aquarium in Hawaii, pumps in water directly from the ocean. Every time I see a setup like that, the health of the fish and corals just really looks amazing. I am so jealous of their ability to essentially do continuous water changes with perfect water. The next display over is a large fish system showcasing things like groupers and eels. It was really interesting to note that this tank was separated from the neighboring reef system with just some mesh material. They all share the same water. One thing I'll mention about public aquariums as they relate to home aquariums is that the ones that know what they're doing can shed some light on the natural habitat the fish and corals come from. Not everyone can go diving to see the habitat firsthand, so a good public aquarium is the next best thing. It was only recently that I learned that most plate corals don't like being on a sandy substrate. In the wild, they're almost exclusively found on big chunky rubble. Right now I think there's a big disconnect between the hobbyist and the natural reef, where hobbyists have no clue whatsoever what conditions certain corals are found in. The more aware we become of the natural habitat, the better we can care for some of these animals, especially the ones that are notoriously challenging to keep. The spiny lobsters in this cylinder display were crazy. The largest one had to be three feet long, not counting the antenna. Most aquariums have jellyfish displays these days. It's sort of par for the course. Until recently, there weren't residential models for home aquarists, but those never really caught my eye much because I wasn't a fan of their small size. Lately though, I've noticed some manufacturers are making much larger ones, and there's a chance in the future I might consider getting one of those. Also, I hope that more varieties of jellyfish will be available in the future. I love these bioluminescent ones, for example. I included this clip of garden eels because they seem to be the unofficial mascot of Okinawa. In gift shops, half the stuffed animals are of these fish. Before, I mentioned that there were several displays outside of the main aquarium building. 
These include a dolphin show stadium in these two areas, one dedicated to manatees and the other to sea turtles. They're even breeding them here. Honestly, from top down, the turtle enclosure didn't look like much, but from uh, the, an underwater view, it looked really, really cool. And finally, we come to the tank that the Okinawa Aquarium is famous for. The signature display is called the Kurushio Sea. It measures 115 feet long, 89 feet wide, and 33 feet deep. For those keeping score at home, that's just shy of 2 million gallons of water. The acrylic panel you see is 74 feet by 27 feet and is 2 feet thick. There are actually 80 species of coral in this tank, but let's be serious, nobody notices them for pretty obvious reasons. Okay, I'm gonna stop talking and just let you guys appreciate this spectacular tank. Thanks for watching.